Hello and welcome to MATLAB programming for numerical computations. We are in module 2, this is lecture 2.2. In this lecture, we are going to cover truncation errors and round of errors. In the previous lecture, we had seen Maclaurin series expansion of e to the power x and saw that as we retain more number of terms in that series, the error reduces. We also saw what is known as machine precision. So there is a least count that is associated with using real numbers in MATLAB or any other computer based program. Okay? We are going to use this concepts to understand what truncation error is and what round of error is and how that works. Okay? So this is the Taylor series. The Taylor series uh, is given by f of x plus h equal to f of x plus h f dash of x. Uh, plus h square by 2 factorial h dash f double dash of x, so on and so forth. If we retain only n nth order terms in the, in the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series, the error is of the order of uh, h to the power n plus 1. This is something that we have al also seen in the computational techniques course. Uh, Taylor series is some kind of a workhorse when it comes to computational techniques. It is used in order to derive a large number of uh, computational techniques as uh, you might have seen in a numerical methods or computational techniques course. The accuracy depends on how many terms are retained in order to derive that numerical technique. So greater the number of terms we represent or larger is this value of n greater is going to be the accuracy of the numerical scheme that you are using for the computation purposes. Okay? So let us head back to the Maclaurin series. So what happens when we retain the Maclaurin series to the nth order term? We are losing h to the power n, so that is n plus 1 sorry. So that is the leading term when it comes to the accuracy. So when we are replacing x with 0 and h with a, we are going to get this Maclaurin series for e to the power a and when we retain n, no, n terms, we are going to get the order of accuracy to be uh, a to the power n plus 1. So, so last term implies that the error is uh, uh, of the order of n to the power n, a to the power n plus 1 because we have retained only the finite number of series. Okay? So let us head back to MATLAB and let us look at the Maclaurin series code that we had written earlier. Okay? So this is how we had written the code. Again, uh, if you recall from module 1, uh, this is somewhat an inefficient way of writing a code in MATLAB because MATLAB we can use the power of uh, uh, arrays in order to calculate this in a more efficient way. So that is what first I am going to do, I am going to use the, uh, the power of arrays in order to do that. So let us just delete this, okay. a was 0 0.1, let us define a vector called vec equal to 1 to n. Okay. The various terms are going to be, uh, terms are going to be equal to uh, a to the power uh, n are going to be the various terms. So, a dot caret vec are going to be the various terms divided by the factorial. The factorial we can cal calculate using the uh, MATLAB command called comprod, c-u-m-p-r-o-d and comprod vec. Okay? Now, what is that going to do? So, let us look at this over here, say a equal to 0 let us say a equal to uh, 0 0.1, vec equal to 1, 2, 3. Okay? So a caret vec is going to be a to the power 1, a to the power 2, a to the power 3. Okay? And we are using dot caret because it is an element by element power. Okay? Now let us see what comprod of vec gives us, comprod of vec is going to give us, the first guy is 1, the second guy is 1 multiplied by 2 that is 2, third guy is 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 that is 6. Let us say if we were to do comprod of say 1 to 5, this is what we are going to get. The first guy is 1 factorial, second is 2 factorial, third is 3 factorial, fourth is 4 factorial, fifth is 5 factorial. Okay? So this is a vector which is a to the power i 
this is a vector which is i factorial and if we do an element by element division, we are going to get each element of the Maclaurin series. Okay? So, we needed to do an element by element division, so we would use a dot slash and not just a slash. So, these are going to be the various terms okay? and the exp val is going to be equal to come sum of the various terms. So, what is the exp val going to be? Exp val is the first guy is going to be a, the second guy is going to be a plus a squared, the third guy is going to be a plus a squared plus a cube by 3 factorial, so on and so forth. Okay? So, these are going to be individual terms, we have not yet added 1, so we will do that over here. So, exp val is going to be 1 plus come sum of terms. So, that those are going to be the first guy is going to be uh, the approximate value 1 plus a, the second guy is going to be 1 plus a plus a square by 2 factorial, the third one is 1 plus a plus a square by 3 factorial, so on and so forth. So, this is what we are going to get okay? and this is the true val and error is the absolute value of difference between the true val and exp val. So, let us go and save this and run this in MATLAB and see whether we are going to get the same results as before or not, clear all and clear the screen and let us run Maclaurin exponential and let us look at exp val and we are getting 1.1, 1.105, 1.1052 1 so on and so forth and error if we see is similar to what we obtained last time. The only difference is in the last last time when we did that, we had the term 1.0 as well, which was a 0th order term. We do not need that term, so we have gotten rid of that already. Okay? So, we have now retained one term that is the first order term, the second term that is the second order term, third term that is the third order term and so on and so forth. Okay? So, this is what we did when we wanted to get the Maclaurin series expansion of 0, uh, e to the power 0 0.1. So, what if we wanted this as for e to the power 0 0.01 as well? So, in order to do that, let us replace a with 0 0.01 and let us see what we get with that. Okay? And let us run this and we will see error again. Okay. So, when we use it, yeah, I am sorry about that, this also needs to be changed and now let us run this and let us look at what error we get. As we can see, the error when we have h smaller, that means the value of a is smaller, the error has decreased quite significantly as well. Okay. So, let us now do uh, uh, something is let us look at let us say first, second and third order term for various different values of a. So, let us look at the values of a equal to let us say 0 0.1 okay? and let us plot this particular one on a plot. So, let us say plot error and let us say hold on, so that that particular plot is held. So, let us look at now plotting how the error changes with respect to uh, the various values of h. Okay? So, what we are going to do is uh, for n equal to 3, let us take various values of a as say 0 0.1, 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.05. 0.02 and 0.01. Okay, these are the various values of a that we are going to use. Okay, a all, let us call that. We need the vec. Vec is going to be 1 to n. Okay, so, for i equal to 1 to length of a all, P val is this two val well. 
So, these are the changes that we are going to do and a equal to a all i. and we are going to plot a all comma error and we are going to name this axis also x label step size and y label error okay so this is what we are going to do over here. Okay. So, let us first run this and see uh, that we are able to run this without an error or not. If we do get an error, we will just go back and uh, debug this code. Yes, we are getting an error. We have an undefined variable ERR. So, let us define ERR equal to a blank vector and let us now run this code and we are getting a error versus step size. Okay what we are seeing is as the step size increases the value of error is also keeps increasing so we don't want to look at a, a linear plot we want to look at a logarithmic plot so instead of saying plot i'm going to say log log so that will give me a logarithmic plot a log log plot over here okay and uh, this is what i'm going to run so, let me run this. So, I have gotten this logarithmic plot for the three uh, uh, particular values of n okay. and let me label that label n equal to 1, n equal to 2 and n equal to 3. sorry it is not label it is legend and show graph. Okay. So, this is for n equal to 1, this line is for n equal to 2 and this line is for n equal to 3. Okay. So, the things that you notice over here is that or the as the step size increases the error increases or as the step size decreases the error is decreasing other thing that you will notice is let us put a marker for this other thing that you will notice is that the slope of the lines are different they are all approximately linear or straight lines but the slope of these lines are different and they are linear straight lines even when there are four points so they they do look fairly straight to me so their the their slopes as you can see this one is a more gentle slope for n equal to 1 for n equal to uh, 2 we have a steeper slope than n equal to 1 and for n equal to 3 we have an even steeper slope okay so let's go and plot instead of plotting on a log log plot let us actually plot logarithm of a all and error so let us say figure 2 plotting figure 2 will say plot log 10 of a all and log 10 of ERR. And let us run this and yes, we have gotten this plot also. So, this is basically we are instead of a log log plot, we have a linear plot, but we are plotting the logarithm of values. So, let us click on this and query the various points that we have. So, the first point is x equal to minus 1 and y equal to minus 2.28. Okay. And the last point over here is x equal to minus 2 and y equal to minus 4.3. So, let us get that slope. So, it is minus 4.3 minus 2 point let us go back and see minus 2.286 2.286. So, minus and minus is going to become plus divided by minus 2 plus 1. So, divided by minus 2 plus 1. 
So, the slope for n equal to 1 is approximately 2.01. Let us look at the case where n equal to 3. Here the y value is minus 5.371. So, that is minus 5.371 plus this value is minus 9.379. So, minus and minus will become plus minus 9.379. The whole thing is divided by minus 1 plus 2 minus 1 plus 2 and the slope turns out to be 4. Likewise, if we were to do for this particular line, the slope will turn out to be 3. So, this is a line with slope of 2, this is a line with slope of 3 and this is a line with slope of 4. So, this if you see what we are getting is slope of the nth order curve is n plus 1 and that is what is the meaning of order of a to the power n plus 1. Okay? So, when we retained just these terms o to the power n plus 1 where n was equal to 1 becomes o to, uh, order of a to the power 2. So, we are getting the accuracy is uh, a square accuracy. When we retain uh, the a square by 2 factorial term also the slope is of uh, the slope is equal to 3 that is because the order of accuracy is the step size to the power 4 and when we have a to the power 3 divided by 3 term also included, it is a to the power 3, 3 plus 1 that is a to the power 4. So, the 3 lines have a slope of 2, 3 and 4 that is because the order of accuracy is n plus 1. So, the retaining the first order term has a slope of 2, retaining second order term has a slope of 3, retaining third order term has a slope of 4. So, that is the meaning of this particular term order of accuracy. So, what we have seen over here is that the order of accuracy increases or improves as we retain greater number of terms. Okay? So, to summarize what we see in truncation error is that we have greater the number of terms, we have lower is the error, smaller is the value of a, we have lower error and when we plot logarithm of error versus logarithm of a, we get a linear increase and the slope is n plus 1. So, the slope is nothing but the order of accuracy. Okay? With that, I come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, which is also continuation of lecture 1.2, we are going to cover the round of error and we are going to see trade off between round of error and truncation error. So, thank you and see you in the next part of this lecture.